the hottest station broadcasting live around the world www.skylineradio.org.uk the godfather the godfather the weekend sounds great report to me there's some questions you left to answer report to me disrespect ain't no laughing matter report to me I'll be the judge I'll be the jury report to me immediately Pass by you around this morning at a quarter to three but you were with me after you read this note then you know this ain't no joke so report to me there's some questions you left to answer report to me this respect ain't no laughing matter report to me I'll be the judge Skylineradio.org.uk Welcome to the crucial side of the, the program here this afternoon. Godfather here live inside right now. Big up all the people in tune. Locked in time for the crucial interview with the man from out of South London. We talked to the man called Mr. Swing Easy. South London Revival Doctor. Stand by. We're going to talk to him right now. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Report to me There's some questions you left to answer. Report Disrespect ain't no laughing matter Report to me I'll be the judge I'll be the jury Report to me immediately Greetings, this is Mr Swing Easy The Revival Doctor from South London Big respect to the Godfather On the Keep It Real Sunday Show Good afternoon. All right, mate. Yeah, I'm here. Mr. Swing Easy, and good afternoon. Thank you for finding time to be with us um, this afternoon here right now. Uh, of course. Not a problem. I- I'm not doing much. <laughs> I know you've been waiting all week for this right now, and it's, it's a it's a it's a moment for many people to hear about yourself. We've been seeing you from time to time, especially in the West Midlands, in West Bromwich, at the Annex Bar. And where you played several times amongst many other DJs. Um, before we start, how are you feeling right now? Oh, very good. I've been watching cricket all morning. I'm a massive cricket fan. And uh, England have pulled off a wonderful win, as did the West Indies earlier on in the morning in Brisbane. So uh, I'm feeling as good as I can feel. Okay. I think this side here, um, I, I forgot all about it. Uh, West Bromwich and Wolves are playing today. I don't know what the score is. I know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They're on. Uh, Wolves are one up, I think. Wow. Good to good to know. Good to know. But in the meantime, good afternoon once again. And shout out to you and your family. Also, shout out out to Pearl as well. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, man. You know something? The first time I saw you was at the Annex Bar in West Bromwich. Of course, the organizers for the event has given me the permission to talk to you. And uh, shout out to Chaplin and the rest of the crew. Tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of how did you start your music industry with reggae? Well, um, rather a long story. First of all, I had to get a love for the music. When I was a child, I have have two older sisters. um, And my eldest sister was uh, really into uh, the sort of Tighten Up LPs and the Motown Chartbuster LPs and uh, that kind of era so um, i was born 63 so late 60s early 70s so i heard this music growing up a lot 
And then uh, she did me an even bigger favor in the mid 70s. She moved um, to Labrook Grove and then she was bringing back like Bob Marley, Burning Spear, Hamilton Bahana and Al Green. So I had this music around me and then went through my own phases with music. And then as a teenager, I was sort of really into the two tone sound. Um, and that kind of reconnected me to a lot of the things that I'd listened to. And then um, I met some very helpful people while I was at uh, university in the early 80s. And that was it. I'd say my path was set as a, a black music fanatic from about 84 onwards. Um, and uh, I was just a, a record buyer um, for a long time. I moved to um, uh, the West Midlands in 86. And for then, for the next sort of uh, number of years, I was really just a record buyer um, in Summit, at Don Christie's at first, and then in Summit's, uh, Direct Link, and one or two other places. Um, and then in the mid-90s, I kind of got a record room together, and I was encouraged to um, just do a bit more with it. I just couldn't bring myself to speak into a microphone, so I did mixtapes <laughs> by the dozen. Okay. Um, then uh, I've got to big up my brother GB, who you also met at the Onyx Bar the other week. He kind of—I I met him through work in Birmingham, and he took me under his wing and into his fold. They had a, a sound system operation, GB Movements Uprising crew out of Hockley, and they kind of included me in some things they were doing, and um, that, that got me going on the sound system side of things. Um, then I moved back to London uh, 2001-ish and uh, then achieved my, uh, I got kind of saying, right, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out and play records for people. And I kind of scratched around at that in uh, empty uh, bars and clubs. Okay, so um, let's stop you there for a little while. Let's yeah, stop yeah, there. yeah, stop me at any point. Right, now before, when you came to the Midlands after leaving London uh -huh. and you started to collect your music in the Midlands, that's where you started your collection of music? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh -huh. Well, I bought, yeah, I bought a few bits. And I had I had records before then, but at the, the point where I got, I, I landed in Birmingham, I, I then I had a job that could buy records, you know, I had money to buy records. I said, right, that's it now. I'm starting to, I'm just buying, buying, buying. Okay. Now, your ventures in the Midlands in terms of music, how did you find the atmosphere regarding the music you was buying in, in the Midlands? Because obviously you bought well, majority. How, how do you, you feel? You, you, I, I, it, it's unusual. I mean, I started off at Don the, the day I moved to Birmingham was, uh, I said 86, actually it was August 87. Mm -hmm. Literally, I moved to Birmingham and the next day I was in Don Christie's. I'd seen the adverts in the back of Echoes magazines and other uh, newspaper and other things. The next day I was at Don Christie's and I can tell you that I bought Hang On Natty by Sugar Minot the first day. I wrote it on the label. Um, so because I was just so, you know, I was just so passionate about buying the music, I didn't really notice much else around me. Um, uh, it was a bit intimidating for me just as, a, uh, as an English guy going into Don Christie's on a Saturday. It was pretty busy in there. But obviously Don, uh, uh, as I called him, although I now know um, that he, actually his name was Dave, but obviously I, I knew we, him we, we, all, we all called him Don Christie anyway, so we didn't I know. know. <laughs> I know, but in fact it's Dave and okay. um, Don Christie was two people. It was Donald and Christine who had the original premises in Smallbrook, I mm -hmm. think, uh, which Don took over, or, you know, Dave took over. But obviously, as an English guy, he recognized an English guy, and he kind of said, look, kind of let this guy out of the way, let him get to the counter. And, um, you know, it, he, he would recommend things that I didn't know, and, and he was, you know, he could see my passion. But then when, um, when that shop shut, um, I didn't find it as easy to go in. Um, so I then transferred to... Um, summits above the ball ring um, when he was on the um, above the market there yeah, yeah and obviously you know Winston was you know just just really easy to, to talk to although you know I was incredibly shy about talking to him but he was really helpful um, and then I went to every every summits that they had there were Wolverhampton Coventry and Stevenson Street um, and Winston really was my music mentor he really shaped my tastes not just reggae music but soul as well okay um he's uh he, he's just the, um, a professor of music winston has been around for a long time i'm telling you long yeah from bennett's bennett's hill and before then he was in distribution um so he knew all the guys in london and bristol manchester liverpool he was up and down the motorway distributing to shops um even before he had a shop 
Winston has been in the limelight for many of the sound system maternity, especially in Birmingham and Wolverhampton, and other areas as well, as you just mentioned. And um, he's a good friend of mine. And um, we've done a lot of things together in terms of music and cassettes and etc. But um, yeah. you, you spent a good time with him. And, and, and as you said, the tribute to him in terms of him being still around where a lot of record yeah, sure. shops... I, I went, we went on the afternoon that um, I played in West Brom. Um, and, um, at the point where I was, you know, buying music on a, on a crazy scale, I was going to the shop three, four times a week. I'd go once in the week, I'd go on the Saturday and then he'd say, he would go down to Jetstar on the Sunday and he'd come back up and I'd be there waiting for him along with all the sound men on a Sunday evening. <laughs> I'd see his car parked on the ramp up to the shop. Mm -hmm. And I parked just behind it because he was bringing back things that uh, he thought I might like or um, I'd asked for on the Sunday. And then all the sound men were in there after the prees. Um, so th three, four, three, four times a week for, for many years. Mm -hmm. I suppose you became part of that uh, package where every sound system would have their own box, personal box, just handed to them without playing them because obviously uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know it at the time, but that's what he was doing. He, he, he was, um, he was buying things or get it, obtaining things that he thought I might like mm -hmm. or that I should have mm -hmm. rather than things that had occurred to me. So he was really shaping my tastes and I can, I can point to, you know, just dozens of things. I'm looking at my racks now and I'm look, I can point to dozens of things I wouldn't have listened to, but for Winston. And then he'd give the knowledge behind it. Um, let me give you an example. So he encouraged me to buy, um, uh, legalize it, Peter Tosh, Natty Dread, Bob Marley, and Blackheart Man, um, Bunny Whaler. It's the first three LPs that each of the Whalers did as solo artists. And he then would link it and say, well, look, it was the Whalers band on each of them. And uh, they each make different statements in different ways. So that was that was the depth of um, knowledge that he was uh, that he was giving as context for the music. Okay. So I can tell where you are with that selection there. What about the revival side of things? How do you get involved in that? Well, I, I, when I was in West Mid, I was really a record shop guy. I had a very full-on job. I didn't Good rave fun. too much at all. When I, once I fell in with GB and Jikus and the guys, then I was kind of stepping out a little bit more into, um, into that side of things. Um, but it wasn't really until I got back down to London, I thought, right, well, I'm going to just do that. Do that. I've got, I know the path I'm on. Um, I'm going to do this off my own bat now. Um, and I would date it from, I went to a record auction, maybe 2002, something like that, a place called Scenarios in New Cross. And that was where I first met the, or came across really the London Revive fraternity. So I remember meeting Tiny T that day and one or two others, Article Ranks, one or two others. And then I was seeing where the different events were. Um, and uh, I got into um, uh, the different nights that were on. So Tighten Up was one of those um, and uh, other sessions. But I'd really date my, um, when I was like kind of two feet in the whole thing, when I started going to a venue called Albertines, which was on a Wednesday um, session run by um, Edie Cooley and Frenchy and a, a bar in uh, Lewisham. Um, and then there were kind of different spin-offs from that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd have met Chaplin at um, when Albertines moved to the Flower of Kent. He was the promoter um, at the Flower of Kent with Frenchy. And I played at Albertines 2012, something like that. Um, and that's when I, I kind of had two feet in the thing, I think, from then on. That's where, and that's where everything started from that time, 2012. Well, the, 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 the public side of it, but mm -hmm. I've been involved in radio from 10 years before that. I, okay. I, I fluked my way onto uh, community radio in um, 2001 in Battersea. So I'd done a lot of radio the, in, in that 10 years. I was on two stations, um, one after the other. I was on um, a community station, then an in internet station. And then um, 2012, I was involved in the, in the public side of it then. And I was on another station called Venture and then two or three others. So the radio thing went first and then the, 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 
the on on the DJ circuit in this world came second. Well, okay. So in London, you, you, you're doing all those shows now, playing reggae for a people of color. Obviously, it's a Jamaican, you know, history of music that comes along from time to time. Everybody gets involved in collecting their vinyls. There was another brother that was doing pretty well in London at the time, Mr. David Radigan. People classing you as Mr. David Radigan. How do you feel about that when people mention that name to you? Well, I mean, how long have you got? Um, I mean, I start, you know, first of all, I'm a fan. Um, I was listening to people were um, uh, asking me the Capital Radio tapes, you know, 40 years ago now, longer, 40, 41, 42 years ago. So first of all, a fan. I think those Capital Radio shows, and actually, you know, I don't listen to him too much now, but as, as a radio presenter and the way he, he puts that collage of sound together for his radio shows with the jingles, the snippets, the, the sound effects, the music, the voice, I think as a radio presenter, um, just incredible. When I started um, radio, the Rodigan voice came out. I mean, you know, I have what they call received pronunciation. I had a... Um, you know, an English middle class upbringing. My voice is my voice. I'm not about to start talking in patois or anything else or putting on a different <laughs> voice. So my voice came out. I guess it sounds a bit like his. Um, and then I was kind of following him around for quite a long time um, just to listen to him play. Um, I used to go every Wednesday um, to um, a club called Mass in Brixton where he played. This was in the years when he was still sort of under the radar um, before his kind of current incarnation as the festivals guy and uh, you know he's more global renown really he was just on the black side of things for for many many years mm -hmm. so any um comparison is flattering um but the point i think is this that in london um it's very diluted you know there's loads of people from different backgrounds you know english backgrounds european backgrounds asian backgrounds um involved in 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 this thing as well as um people from uh, west indian uh, african backgrounds Whereas I never met one of me in Birmingham. <laughs> never. All, all those years of going to the shops, I never met one of me. And, you know, when I came up last August um, and January to play, there was not one of me there either. <laughs> it was still just me. So I understand why people um, might make that comment. I think there was, and, I think there was one guy who was um, on a particular station in Birmingham. I think it was an Iceman. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. You ever heard of the Iceman? Yeah, I, I dim, dimly. Yeah, dimly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's whitey. That, that, I'm not saying we don't exist. I'm just saying that I never met me. Okay. I never met another me in, in the 20 years <laughs> I either lived or worked in the West Midlands. Okay, yeah, man. Um, that brother was pretty good. Um, yeah. Like you said before, you, you never met anybody of your kind here. Um, no. I suppose in, in, in another sense, it was more like... You was good at what you were doing because you was the only one here, but you didn't get the chance to sort of get involved with radio or anybody this side. But now you've... Well, uh, yeah, no, just, to, just to make the point, I was living a very different life then. I had this, um, I had a very high, you know, high profile demanding job. Um, uh, my music was really a very private right. thing. Right, okay. Um, so um, I wasn't um, looking for those opportunities point one uh but i was encouraged i was encouraged to buy equipment um i was encouraged to have a music room um and so it was coming but i i just simply could never see myself talking into a microphone i was so self-conscious i mean you know listening to me now you, think, you can't shut me up but you know i'm going back 30 years i i, I just simply couldn't open my mouth in front of a microphone so uh, it was it was a it was a you know it was, it was a non-starter to think that I might um, you know get into radio or do things publicly. Right, you're you're known for um, a lot of different stuff you can pull out when you're ready. Um, second time around, of course, many people from this side are in tune to the show here right now. Uh, of course, um, the people that you played along alongside a couple of weeks ago, uh, Father Rooster and Skipper. <laughs> Yeah, enough respect. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. The first time I played was with Jonah, um, uh, who I know because uh, he comes down to London, and uh, and uh, I've I've known like him, guys like him and Archie. I've known through the scene, um, and um, 
but I hadn't met uh, Skippy and Lippy, uh, Rooster and uh, Daddy Skipper, but enough respect. It was a lot of fun. But the other thing um, also was that Chaplin, during lockdown, Chaplin ran a series of online um, events. Some were in a clash format, some were not. Um, so I was involved in the, in those as well. So I played against um, Eternal Youth, Mikey Eternal Youth. I played against Mr. Mention a couple of times. Um, and I got to see guys like Ribs, Tipitone Ribs, and uh, get to know a few of the um, faces up there. I get to understand that um, not just of Thursdays, that they've also started a, a revival night down there as well in, in London as well. Uh, other way around. Um, th so the one, uh, Albertines, as mentioned, then moved to the Flower of Kent, which switched with Thursday, and that was promoted by Chaplin. Um, it's now switched to another venue, the Golden Anchor. Right. Um, and then Chaplin's kind of, uh, uh, the, the West Mids one is kind of the offshoot because, you know, obviously he's, he's, it's, it's a great idea. People are ready for it. And um, I think his model was... Uh, to try and do something in the West Mids that he'd started and was involved heavily in in London. Right, and, and it's it's it's, pretty, it's working actually as well, very well as well. It, it is working actually, but I've got a little um, exclusive for your listeners, um, which is that uh, as of this summer, the um, uh, format as it is is going to change for a short while, and it's going to switch to a clash format. Um, so Chaplin has 16 uh, participants. I'm one of them. Um, and it's going to go to a clash format week to week. So there's a round of 16. Um, and then the eight winners go to the next round. And then four semi-finalists and a final with sort of trophies and so forth uh, further into the autumn. Well, with, with, with that then in mind, how long would that take in all together? What's, uh, what's, the, what's the plan for the, that length of time? For well, it would need, my understanding is that the, uh, the, 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 the round of 16 would need to be over eight weeks. Okay. And then the, the round of eight over four. And then it may switch to um, a weekend and a bigger venue for the semi-final and final. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's, that's to, to be confirmed. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, for a period of time, it goes from a... Uh, a friendly format to a proper clash format, and okay. uh, I'll be involved in that. Okay, we'll hope to um, talk to the man himself, Chaplin, here on the platform about that, and and, and see what the, the plan is for the the next time that um, you all get together and go into that clash. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Can't wait. Okay. Can't wait. Right. So I, li me... I like a bit of a clash, Godfather. You do. You oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask another question. Out of all the reggae artists that you've played over the years, which is your favourite? Other than Gregory Isaacs. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Say that. Yeah. Yeah. Besides Gregory Isaac, who else is, would be on top? Besides of yours? Gregory Isaac. Gregory Isaac is my favourite Jamaican singer by a mile. Well, before then, I would have told you my favourite was uh, probably a Slim Smith. Um, I love Ken Parker. I love little. In the pocket artist, I love Tony Tuff, his voice. I love Barry Brown, Sugar Minot, can't leave him out. Um, Jennifer Lara, for a female singing voice. Yeah. Mm. Did you get, did you ever get chance in the eighties to see um, Gregory perform in London? Yes, I did. I did. I saw him. There's a very famous show he did at the Academy in Brixton mm -hmm. uh, in '84, the one where he comes on in the fedora and the cream suit, and he's giving out roses to the uh, 200,000 women in the first 10 rows, um, <laughs> Roots Radix band. Yeah. Uh, 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 I was there. Yeah. So you was there the first night because he came back the next one. He had to do two shows because of the, the amount of people that couldn't get to see him the first time. Yeah. Well, I had my tickets from, from, from time. So that's a bit, I probably was there for the first one. Yeah. Okay. It was sensational. Sensational. Something different out of this world, I suppose. Was that your first reggae artist you've seen on stage? Hell no, 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 no. I saw um, I saw Culture in '81 with the entirety of the Lloyd Parks and the We the People band. There wasn't enough room for them on the stage. Full horn section, full backing section. Lloyd Parks and the We the People band and Culture at, ve at the venue um, in 1981. Okay, all right. So, of but course... not, I'm not a big gig guy to be honest with you. Um, and in recent years, I've um, I much prefer people say, oh, I'm off to see so-and-so. And I say, well, you know, enjoy. But 
but uh, I, I'll listen to the 45s at home. Yeah, I'm the same as well. I hear of yeah. different bands and so forth. Um, but obviously, being a, a radio DJ, in terms of presenting, you, you get to meet different people in that sure. field. You know what I mean? So this is where yeah. the interviews come in useful as well, making that link oh, for sure. to get these shows going and to get people yeah, here. My, my, my list of um, people met is, is, is short, um, uh, uh, but, but quite select. But I'm always absolutely tongue-tied. when I, To me, it's like, you know, meeting the Rolling Stones or something. You know, I just cannot get the words. I can't remember any records they've done. I'm just utterly starstruck. <laughs> Right. Um, okay. So I met Alton Ellis. I just about managed to say something to him. Mm -hmm. um, Cassandra, I know the, the the I call her the lioness of Lovers Rock. Um, uh, so she she I know her through through a different connection. Um, but yeah, I met I met Culture and a few other people, big youth. But I just I, I never know what to say because I'm just completely starstruck. I think a lot of people would be in the same position as well. You know, what do I say to this? I'm the same as well, but once you get the first word out, then you, 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 you're you going flying. You yeah, know? I haven't got that far many times. Okay, well, all right. So, um, you've been doing a lot of stuff around music and uh, meeting a few people and playing here and there. Let's talk about your book. You put a book out, and it's called The Englishman. Tell us a bit about the book. Well, um, I love to write, um, and I thought that... I'd had um, a good number of um, experiences that maybe weren't typical for someone of my background. I thought I'd had an insight into a world that um, not many people from my background had had. Although I think actually it's rather more than I think they have. But it's more that I like to write and I had some, some stuff to write about. So um, I just sat down, you know, very privately and just started tapping um it went in surges so i'd write in a in a in a in a in a whirlwind and then leave it for six months write another in a whirlwind leave it and over four years i thought well hang on there's something here right and i kind of forced myself to sort of finish it and put it in some kind of shape um uh, but the winning ticket really was that um i met somebody who made a success out of self-publishing because like most people i'd think well if you write a book, you someone else publishes it. I'm looking at my um, little book collection as I'm speaking to you, and but someone else has published all of them. But when someone explains self-publishing to me, and that all you do is upload a file, press a few buttons, and a few days later your book comes through the post, that was the kind of um, the point where the penny dropped really. Wow. And I thought, wow. well, let's do that. So I printed 25, which I did as a sort of blank label release, and then a few more. Um, dub vendor have taken it on and have had good sales through dub vendor and now my uh i'm getting very good sales through line vibes the shop online shop line vibes mm. um but in terms of what's in it it's different adventures that i've had i've written um what i thought was a very good account of what it was like to be on a pirate radio station um not many people have written about that i've had some hair-raisingly uh, fun gigs down the years. Um, you know, I've, I've played in Shabins and various other places. So I thought that would be interesting to write about. Should be, you um, said, you, use the word Shabins. You played at Blues, have you? Yeah, well, I, it was more a Shub, actually. But, um, uh, I mean, in, in, in the sense that it was semi-permanent, Blues kind of, in my uh, use of the word, kind of move around okay. and uh, okay. much more, more kind of home-based. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, in... Uh, I mean, I've raved in both, obviously, but um, but yeah, uh, it, yeah. <laughs> well, you'd have to read the. I don't know if I can say it on your station, so I won't say it. But you have to read the book for what kind, what actually was going on in there. Um, and then I've tried my hand at different things. I've built a little sound system, and I've given that a good go. Um, in fact, it was built in Birmingham, uh, Erdington, in fact. Wow, wow. Uh, big okay. up Victor, who's uh, sadly departed us, but. Uh, um, Victor out of Erdington built my boxes. They're just sitting right next to me here. So I've tried a sound system and um, different other things, but didn't really succeed at many of them. And I've had a lot more kind of um, failures than successes. And in some ways, I think that's more interesting to read about than um, uh, than you know than flying successes. But uh, yeah. yeah, if you go to Lion Vibes, um, you'll see that it's called Englishman by Toby Broom, which is my um, a given name, and uh, I anybody who's got any interest in this music would enjoy the read, I think. Right, 
Is it also available on, on audio as well? No. Um, and, and there, thereby hangs it back. My mother um, is registered blind and I've, I, I've, I've always wanted to try and audio record it for her. Um, but I've just yet to find the time. But uh, that's my incentive. So my mum can plug in the headphones and have a listen. Okay. Right. So obviously the book is a good good read. I, I have a copy, um, not of the book, but of the strips. And um, it was a lot. Yeah, of... we, we tried our hardest to get the book to you. <laughs> we did. You did. You did. But I got, yeah. it, I got it in another different format. And it has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The words are the same. Yeah. It's um, 233 pages. Um, Where yeah, that I have. All right, so probably shorter. Everybody it's... has the same. You, okay. you, you, were, you were neither short nor long chain. Okay, okay. Right, so in terms of your music and, and the, the fact that you play out and do all sorts, um, how do you find the difference between the Midlands and London in terms of music, revival style? Right, okie doke. Well, let me try and summarise that for you. Um in in London, so in London, I work either as myself, which when I'm asked, which is really nice, or um, Dub Plate Pearl, and I operate as Camberwell Connection. So, as Camberwell Connection, we've uh, we've had you know, a lot of successes. Actually, we've played some really nice venues. We've played some really nice festivals. Um, we've played. Um, we've had residences. We've done. We were on a, a nice show on Ballamy Radio and on uh, RuptionRadio.co.uk. So that side of it's really cool. Um, playing as myself, so in, a, in an Albertines or a Flower of Kent or a Golden Anchor or Heritage, which was the North London branch um, before it shut down, um, and also one or two things in a sort of clash format, um, London audiences are hard to please. They, there's so much music available. There's so much opportunity to go out. You have to work really hard to get them going, and you have to know your music. Um, uh, it, it, and and you think that people are kind of a bit lean up, I would say, about when when you're playing. Now, the reason we all love the Onyx Bar is that you guys come out to rave, and that they're, they're, they're there from seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and by then the rave is on. Mm -hmm. And if you get it right, the response is fantastic. The 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 you know it's electric. The first time I played up, there was electric in there. Um, and, and you think that, say, the, the female side of the audience, you know, stereotypically you might think, oh, well, you know, they're, 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 they're there for the lover's rock or the soul. Wait till the roots comes on. They're, they're, it's that, that's when they really get going. The, the, the lover's rock and the soul is a warm-up. The, the women are there to rave to the roots, and everybody's there to rave. Whereas in London, you have to kind of work a bit harder for that response. Right, because everybody's everybody's got the same kind of style, um, playing that same kind of groove and whatever. There, there, there's a bit of that, and there's just a bit of the. the I, I get the impression that, um, you know, in terms of supply and demand, there, there's a big supply of this um, music in, in in London, and demand is there. But I get the impression that with the Onyx Bar, um, the, the demand is higher than the supply has been. If you if you see where I'm going, so therefore there's a much 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 sharper response. That that that's how I would characterise it. In London, you could go out most nights of the week, um, whereas I get the impression that the vinyl revival thing. There are things I know. There's things happening. Of course, there are. But um, uh, West Brom Cultural Centre, Heartlands. I know this thing's happening. But mm -hmm. um, this week to week midweek thing. I think that's the other thing. Is being able to go out somewhere in a midweek. It kind of makes it a little bit more special um you know london there's, there's there's numerous places to go west midlands not so much yeah so i suppose in london being the big city itself and many different different nationalities you could always party five seven days a week in london once, yeah, once yeah. you I know mean, you, you, you'd, you'd, you'd hear some pretty ordinary music if mm -hmm. you went out every night of the mm -hmm. week but um yeah that, i think that's the point yeah, yeah there are some specialist areas that you can go to now i saw you on a format on on the youtube a couple of weeks ago um the selected block, showcase that's correct yeah you will yeah there. yeah that was good that was good uh yeah big up music lover and uh professor mark who uh operate that yeah that's that studio set that you see was the console at heritage um, so when you played at Heritage, which is a bar that shut down now, that was the console. They took it out almost lock, stock and barrel 
and stuck it in that uh, studio, which is a radio studio. Okay. But okay. that's a good format. I enjoy. I did that, and I enjoyed it hugely. That's a really nice format. It goes out on a Saturday night, but you can watch it on Catch Up. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that session. So you you got all that there in in a certain part of a certain room, and there's a radio station connected to that as well. It's that the, what you see there is a, is a studio. Uh, Music Lover actually does um, workshops, training um, people who want to get involved in radio. All right. Um, so that's that that room that you see there is in an industrial centre um, up Wembley Way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's used for that on the Saturday. But he does workshops. Um, getting people into radio elsewhere. So it's a sort of um, practice and rehearsal space for, for radio as well. Right. Now, the the, the, the training and so forth for DJs to become DJs and be professional in terms of not just playing music, but also in terms of deliverance, speech, etc. Uh, yeah. Is, is that funded by any organisation or, or has uh, itself... You're, yeah, I'm beyond my knowledge range there. Yeah, from, uh, I, I, what, I, yeah, you'd need to ask Music Lover. I'm not, uh, not, not sure of the detail there, but I know that it has a dual purpose. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Something uh, he's we, a great guy. Yeah, yeah he's a great something guy. we could do um, with uh, down here. I'm sorry. Something that we could do with down here to help. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Help the youth yeah, because it's a skill. You know, it's it's it, it, it. You know, the talk. I had to learn everything about Ray. I had to learn how to speak. Um, you know, how to how to queue up records and you know press jingle buttons and yeah. I had to learn all of that from a standing start at um, a, a pirate station with literally the worst equipment you've ever seen in your life. So uh, <laughs> I think we've all been, um, I think we've all been through that. The amount of stations oh yeah, that's yeah. been in England right but now. But it, it, it all makes the old BBC license fee look a bit expensive. I have to say it does. Uh, even, even their equipment now have changed in time in terms of what they used to use back in the days and yeah. what you see on TV, but in terms of training and so forth, don't forget the youth of today. Majority have never seen a forty-five, never played a forty-five. Doesn't well, no, that's right, and 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 obviously it's you know it's MP3 and um, you know CD CDJs, you know that 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 you know that 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 kind of thing, and you know I think I think that takes some of the hard work out of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, use re the record box. I've seen people ha how they use the record box. Um, or oh, Audacity, or these different programs, and uh, yeah, no, good luck to them. Yeah, something we could call it something like back to school in the final days, uh, just yeah. to show the youths how it's done and how you speak and how you present yeah. yourself as a presenter. Because a lot of yeah. what was happening with the radio and the and the dancehall side of things, the the dancehall, I get to honest, I get to see the and feel that sometimes the way people behave in the dances, they bring it onto the radio, so it sounds the same. Um, uh, it, yes, it, it it does, and presenting is different than actually yeah. in the dance. Okay, you're presenting, you're presenting yourself, you're presenting your information, your details, your correspondent, and yeah. your, your music as well to the audience that is right across the board. Not everybody wants to hear the dance or vibes in and out when they go out and come home. No, it's the same thing. no, radio and dance are two different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if uh, if I won the lottery, I'd start a radio station and uh, there'd be a big sign, you know, covering all of this before anybody came in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, myself at one stage, I was um, somewhere else at one stage, a community radio, and I learned a lot in terms of the professional side of things and see how they did things and how they programmed, how they edited and all these things. But funny enough, I did all that before I went there, so they didn't really teach me much. But I just went there just to get the feel of a radio station and be in a room where you got monitored red lights and yeah, uh, you know. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've done, I've done, you know, I've done different different scenarios, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you have to, there's a lot to think about. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot to think about. But yeah, I, you know, I, I describe myself really as that. That's my strongest suit really is radio i love radio and um we've we've had this great show on ballamy radio for a number of years um big up james ballamy and we've we've taken a new one on eruption radio um uh, big up mr v sound and uh yeah i love radio i really do okay right so before we wrap it up because obviously time but um overall your love of the Midlands is great, and obviously you've met some great My people. My love of the Midlands knows no bounds, Godfather. It knows no bounds. Nice to hear, and, and, and for you to be able to talk to us from South London. And um... Yeah, well, I've got a foot in... I'm lucky I've got a foot in both camps, and uh, 
um, you know, I, I, I owe so much uh, to my time in the West Midlands. It's just a pleasure to come back and um, uh, and play. Um, before the Clash format, I think I might have one more um, go in the friendly format. I think maybe there's something like the last uh, Thursday in May has been talked about with Chaplin. So that one's penciled in. Um, so that'll be my next uh, um, uh, get in the car up the M40. I, I noticed that, and and something for all presenters to, to or so I say, DJs to look at. When you came to the Annex Bar, you just had a little small case and a small few albums. I've got a big up Daddy Studio One, you know, because he always told me, he, another one of my music mentors, he said, um, "Do you selecting at home?" Always, always. And, and 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 the way Chaplin organises the format it actually makes that very easy because you've because you've got these short um, rounds um, you know soul lovers rock uh, this that and the other and then so then you break it down you think well it's forty five minutes so my my corner's twenty five well how many records is that you know that's that's six eight records maybe a few spares and then you're not spending the whole night thumbing through records yeah. Um, uh, you know, I've seen people bring, you know, four, five hundred sevens to a session and uh, they just spend the whole night just going through them. Yeah. Yeah. Do well, your selecting at home. Do your, do your preparation. There you go. Yeah. Every, whether, whether it's in a dance or on the radio, prepare your show before you start. And then you there know, you then you know where you are. Well, radio, radio is different because, you know, obviously you've got to think a bit more on your feet. Um uh, uh, well, you know, if you stood up in the Onyx Bar, you've got to think on your feet because, you know, um, you, you've got to try and say something about maybe what the other guy has played or, you know, you've got to have that side of it. Um, and uh, um, uh, you've got to look at what's in front of you, of course. And mm. if people aren't moving, you've got to move on. <laughs> you know, you've got to get something <laughs> on that they're going to move to. So That's true. That's um, true. You, need, you need some flexibility. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, do your selecting at home. Okay. Well, all right. Is anybody you, you want to say hi to before we say goodbye? Because I, obviously, time. Well, I made I made a list, um, and I think I've got through uh, all of, all of this. Got just a big big up dub plate pearl, obviously Camberwell connection, and uh, Rick and Jill in Sheffield, and uh, Steve Rice downbeat melody in Bristol. Them th them them's my big ups. Okay, okay. And you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And you, you I, I honestly thought when, when you approached me for my number at the Onyx, I honestly thought, um, oh, maybe 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 he wants a CD or something. <laughs> There's a tune I've played um, <laughs> that uh, that you, that you wanted a copy of. But you didn't you didn't realise um, until I rang you. And how did you feel when I said to you, how would you love an interview? Well, I, I feel slightly stupid. I mean, you've had Quaker City on last week. You've got Lloydie Coxon on next week. I mean, I, I'm sitting there feeling like a total imposter, but you haven't cut me off yet. So, <laughs> you know, something I thought about that, you know, but it's always at I least you did, yeah. At, at least, at least you know what level we're on here right now, and obviously the. Uh, I'm 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 very flattered, but. Uh... Um, uh, you know, if we're looking at the FA Cup, you've got two Champions League there, and uh, I'm not quite non-league, but uh, I'm several rungs down the pyramid. I know my place. Well, yes, big up well, to both. Quaker City, by the way, is Pearl's favourite sound, and uh, you know, obviously, we, we all revere Lloydie Coxon. So, where is she anyway? Um, do you honestly want the answer to that? In the kitchen. I'm right. I'm oh, right here. One put, one, one put. Into, into, the, into, the, into the interview. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Okay. Nice to. Good afternoon to you, first of all. Good afternoon to you, Godfather. And I hope that you're well. Yes, everything's fine. Mr. Swing Easy has talked about his life and his music. And I know you've yes. got also a similar part as well. Not as big as him, I don't think, but I don't know. How big is your selection and, and music knowledge? This is the point where I get out Sean with the with with the impact substitute from the bench. So let me hand the phone, listeners. Okay. Well, I do I do play my own right. Um, my name is quite um, popular out there. Um, I play a, a wide selection of soul, reggae, jazz, um, all on vinyl. Mm -hmm. I am a vinyl DJ. Okay. And um, if you look me up on Instagram or Facebook, um, you'll see everything that I've done. Um, not a lot of female DJs. You, you won't see as much as what they've done, but everything is out there. So if people want to see 
and 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 um, see the things that I've done, all the players that I've done. I've done things with Boiler Room. I've done things with London Transport Museum. Uh, you know, I've played in in um, Portugal, in Italy. Oh right. You know, so so yeah, right. I've done quite a lot. So you've been in, you've been around the Europe side as well, then. Yes, I have. I had the opportunity to play there twice. Wow. Okay. And um, that, that was really quite interesting. So when they go into Instagram, what did they look for? What did they type in? They just had to put in Dub Plate Pearl. Dub Plate Pearl, Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram. Okay. And you'll see my profile and you'll see all the different things I've done. Um, also, if you go onto Google, just put in Dub Plate Pearl and everything will come up as to what I've done. Okay. Um, all, the interview, all the interviews that I've done. Um, publicity that I've done with the the um, the, uh, the Guardian and uh, music magazines and um, the Vinyl Factory, yeah, mm. lots of information. Yeah, sounds interesting. I'm, I'm sure a lot of us will be looking that information up, and uh, and also YouTube as well. Yeah, there's, yeah, you can see me on YouTube. There's things that I did with the Vinyl Factory on YouTube. Okay. So yeah. would you, between you and Swing Easy, would you say that the vinyl world has changed over the last couple of years? Um, change? Well, for me, it hasn't because I've always been into vinyl. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has with regard to presenters, people people presenting on different formats, um, uh, like, for instance, CDJs um, uh, on um, laptops and what have you. But um, for me, it's always been vinyl. I'm always been a vinyl person. I will continue to be a vinyl person. You know, for us here on a Sunday, last Sunday of every month, my team, we play vinyls from in the morning up until midnight. And sometimes yep. just to have the, 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 the album or the 17 year hands give you that warmth of quality and the of originality than the, the, the laptop and the USBs and the CDs, exactly. CDs kind of kind of are right too because you can put more music okay on the CDs. It's okay for people who like that. Yeah, yeah fine. you know what I mean. You see, um, go it's, ahead. it's very good, and and for me as a bonus, I work in a record shop, so that. <laughs> oh right, okay. <laughs> so I'm playing vinyl all day. <laughs> so you're not sh you're not it's short. Only we have more in common. <laughs> right. Okay. So sw swinging. Have you been Yo. anywhere, Have you been anywhere outside of England? Well, yeah, it has somewhat left me out. I was on the bill in Rome and uh, twice, and I was on the bill uh, in Portugal. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, together. Uh, yes, we did play together. Okay. And I know no, we've been all over Glasgow, Bristol, you know, di diff different places. Okay. Wolverhampton. You've been to Wolverhampton? Yeah, we played at the party a few years back. That was Nottingham Park. Was it, was it Nottingham? Nottingham. Well, I was getting this up. <laughs> Okay, here we, not here, here we go. Husband, okay, all right. <laughs> oh, that's only a rumor. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, okay. I, well, we hope that once once we can, you know, get everything rolling, we can have you down in this side of Wolverhampton as well. I'd love love to do that. And best of all, what we'd love we have a, a little sound system, um, Campbell Connection Hi-Fi. We'd love nothing more than to put it in the van and bring it up. Ah, that, ah. That's that's our thing. Okay. So how big is it then? Not very big at all. Right. But but it's it's as they say it's little but talawa. It makes a good noise. It makes uh, a very nice noise. Right. Let me ask you a question. Go well, ahead. You know, in 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 times to come, obviously we've seen sound systems change over the years. And as you said, little but talawa. Do you, will you believe that? Is it possible to ha able to have a sound system that can play Bluetooth, speaker wise? Very good. Well, I, I, it, the, I, I, it would never occur to me to do that, but um, you, you can already, can't you? It doesn't, doesn't sound too difficult. Mm, something I need to look at, too, and many people probably do yeah. that too as well, because something we had yeah. a conversation with a couple of people um, yeah. playing this sound system through Bluetooth, you know, without yeah. no cables, no, but no wires. We'd, lo we'd, we'd love to do that. We've done, um, we've played, uh, you know, dip, we've taken it out to different venues. We've played um, a little thing in the middle of Campbellwell uh, Campbellwell Green um, we've taken the set there a couple of times mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it makes a really nice noise it makes a really nice noise okay all right well all right on that score I want to say thank you very much for your time Pearl thank you for your time as well thank you very much Godfather we'll thank look, you we'll look up the details on, on your platform a little later on yes. I'm sure the, the listeners also do the same as well 
Um, no problem at all. That'd be great. It's it's an honour to hear the two of you together, and um, all the you. best in the for the future. And I hope to talk to you thank soon, you. and probably see yeah. you. Yeah, thank there. you. And um, no, thank you for, very much for the for the opportunity. Normal services resume next week when you've got Lloydie Coxon on, um, but um, uh, and we'll be back up very soon and uh any support you can lend me or your listeners can lend me okay um when we when it when it uh when it gets sticky in august um mm-hmm. uh and the clash would be much appreciated and talk about sir coxon and um, lloyd coxon obviously in my interview he talks about he doesn't want to be called sir no more uh, right that, that you'll hear that in an interview next week it's just lloyd right. coxon but what's your view you on what, what's your view on, on on the mighty coxon himself my gosh, how long have you got? I mean, um, you got two minutes. I think mo- I think most people <laughs> would 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 put him pretty much at the top of the tree in terms of UK sound systems. Um, back in the heyday, I was lucky to see him back in the heyday with Festus um, uh, selecting and the full rig and everything. So I got a taste of that. Um, yeah, nothing but respect for him um, uh, as a kind of Jamaican sounding sound. Um, I have to tell you, I'm a very big Saxon fan. Uh, it's more of kind of a UK um, uh, based uh, or, or, or rooted sound mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, as well. But uh, yeah, you got you got to rate Lloydie Coxon, man, honestly. Okay. Well, I'll have to have you using in tune next week, Sunday. Plus everybody else. Yep. Plus everybody else as well. We've had it. We've got it here. We had the interview done uh, last week, Sunday evening, while everybody else was chilling out uh, because he couldn't make it in the afternoon this time because he was you know he, he couldn't make it because he was sleeping after the event that we had a we had a tribute for sir christopher another pioneer yes. you know yes. so have you heard of sir christopher of course yeah um i buy records through um a guy based in nottingham his name's tradition big up andrew neil tradition in nottingham if you google that you'll find him and he is a sound system historian um, as much as anything, and he's really across all the Midlands sounds. So all the ones out of places, you know, like Nottingham and Derby and uh, further afield, um, and he's across all the West Midlands sounds. So he's written you know, bits on the history of the Duke Alloys and the Sir Christophers and the wow. uh, the, Quaker, the Quaker cities and, and, and all of those guys. Because right. he is buying, you know, at times he's bought their collections, which he then sells on to us through, um, through mail order. Okay. Okay, you got his details. So the you bit still, I can remember snippets about Sir Christopher. I, I think I, right. the bit the snippet I remember was that he had big connection to Moody's, uh, J- the Jamaican producer Moody's. Okay. So he was, okay. he was. Don't, don't draw a Moody's on Sir Christopher. Don't draw no Moody's or be in the mood. Well, all right. On that score, thank you very much for on your that time. Score. Yeah, man. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Godfather and listeners. Thank you for your ears. Yeah, man. No respect. You too. Bye bye. Bless you. All right. Look at more. All right. Skylandradio.org.uk. You heard it from the man himself, Mr. Swing Easy, and also Pearl as well. Wow. What an interview. What a time. We're going to leave you right now with this sound of this man here right now. Sometime when it comes to the Godfather, you got two choices. Either take it or you leave it. All right. Here we go. From the top on this one. All right. Take it or leave it. Skylandradio.org.uk. Once again, thanks. Good night to Mr. Swing Easy. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy this afternoon, but we got through it. I tell you. Take it or leave it. You can't refuse it. Take it or leave it. The Godfather. Oh. The weekend sounds great. Yeah, man. I tell you. The last one from me. Take it or leave it. I tell you. Next week, Sunday, we talk to Lloyd Coxon.
DJ Sensi, the Red Skin Levi, Mr. Fix, DJ Valentino, Final Sundays. Keep it up. <laughs> This is Mark Professor of Ariba Studio on Keeping It Real. W Crazy with the Godfather. Whoa! You got to. It's a reggae music. Take it all, leave it. You can't refuse it. Once again, many thanks to all the people in tune. Enough respect around the world as well. Shout out to you, Irims. Manners and respect, brother. I'll give you a call later on. Tinker, take it or leave it. It's the Keep It Real Sunday show. To refuse it. Take it or leave it. You got to. Take it or leave it. You can't afford to. Well, of course, a man behind the revival scene in West Bromwich. We're going to see if we can look up a man called Chaplin. I tell you. Take it or leave it. Because black people need it. Reminds me of Pharaoh on the Red Sea. When I see the green, I know that whole nation must be fed. Oh yeah. Looking at the gold, I know that. So once again, many thanks gonna add to your swing easy. And also your partner as well, Pearl, I tell you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your love. I tell you. So you got to take it all in. And also shout it out to the people on WhatsApp, give me the thumbs up. Man has some respect to you all right now. Next week Sunday, Lightly Coxon, no more Sir Coxon for 2024, he says. Rock reggae music, originated by the black culture. Rock reggae music. Bye, bye for now. Rock on, rock on. You can't afford to refuse it, to it, to lose it. When I see the red, it reminds me of Pharaoh on the Red Sea. When I see the green, I know that all nation must be fed, oh yeah. Looking at the gold, I know that. The half of never yet been told, don't know. Looking at the black, I know that. Ginger said, I'm here pick up the world internet radio. Seen Team Skyline Radio. That art, that UK. This is Major Mark live on direct from Kingston, Jamaica, and you're listening to Skyline Radio. Keep it real. <laughs> Mm. Anytime I want to hear a good internet radio station, I choose skylineradio.org.uk. Skyline Radio. Please continue listening to the number one internet radio station. www.skylineradio.org.uk. News, reviews, and interviews, and lots more. Godfather, you are the real big man, you know? The Mary Godfather. The weekend sounds great. Godfather is the man. <laughs> 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 music, music, for your listening pleasure. <laughs>